Let's see all the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And this is the third and last conversation for the show this morning. We look at the Nigerian Petroleum Co Company, NMPC Limited, presenting to the Federal Executive Council, that's the FEC, a bill of three trillion naira as what is required for uh, the payment of subsidy for 2022. And this was disclosed by the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed. The minister said that the FEC, that's the Federal Executive Council, considered the request to make additional funding provision to enable the government to meet the incremental fuel subsidy payment in the 2022 budget. And uh, she recalled that only $443 billion is presently available in the 2022 budget uh, meant to accommodate subsidy from January to June. Now, to make sense of all of this, we do have Richard Inoyo, who joins us as an economist uh, to uh, understand the dynamics of this situation. Richard Inoyo, it's good to have you join us this morning. All right, we'll try and get across. Apologize for that technical uh, network problem. We'll try and get back to our guest in order. He would have some very interesting views on that. Um, but Mercy, yeah, it's interesting um, the, the times we're in. Of course, we've been talking about this uh, for some days now. The fact that um, there was a confusion, you know, as to whether the federal government was going to go ahead with removal of fuel subsidy or not, especially when the Senate president um, paid his, his ceremonial visit to Astorok Villa, and then he walked out to that same spot where he likes to stand to address the press. You know the press always wait for him at that spot. And he said these words, President Buhari does not want to remove fuel subsidy. And, and people were, were like, what's going on here? You know, this is not what we heard, because uh, the NMPC uh, GMD, before they, you know, they changed the whole setup in NMPC, he had been saying, um, Amala Kiara had been saying that uh, there will be a removal of fuel subsidy at um, some point in 2022, and that uh, Nigerians will have to pay, yeah, pay the real price or the real cost for, for that. It was unsustainable, was his words. And then, um, towards the, the third quarter, last quarter of 2021, Zainab Ahmed, Minister of Finance and, and uh, Budget and National Planning, came out to say that this was a reality, that the nation can only and will only be able to, you know, fund subsidy up until June 2022. And then she gave, uh, she was asked, okay, what's going to happen when this subsidy is removed? What's the plan of the federal government? And she talked about what um, uh, giving a monthly stipend to uh, 30 to 40 million uh, poorest Nigerians, you know. And then people now started crunching numbers and crunching the figures. Say, okay, if we're looking at a removal of your subsidy, we look at the calculations. It, what it will cost Nigerians to or the federal government to pay these 30 to 40 million poor Nigerians uh, transport subsidy will be um, more than what you'd have spent on the petrol subsidy. So where is the money coming from? You should be saving money than spending it. And of course, President Buhari went ahead to, to present the uh, budget to the National Assembly. And in that budget that the president presented and laid before the, the National Assembly, there was no provision for fuel subsidy beyond the middle of the year. So it was, it was a sort of conflicting and surprising to hear the Senate president come out and say, oh, you know what, the president does not believe, believe um, in fuel subsidy. Then he now calls, I'm sorry, Messi, just to uh, round up Richard. He now calls Zainab Ahmed and calls Timmy President to his office at the Senate. They have a closed door meeting and they come out to say, oh, we would not uh, go on with the, uh, the removal of fuel subsidy. We're suspending it for now. You know, so this this has been a bit confusing. It's been a roller coaster for um, for Nigerians. And you now put that in the light of agitations and threats by Labour to embark on a nationwide strike, which we don't need at this point. It's been uh, a roller coaster of an experience. And you also want to add the issue of the PIA, uh, that's the Petroleum Industry Act, that uh, rules out entirely, you know, the subsidy regime. And what have you, I mean, at this point, if we're looking at February, we should entirely not be having conversation about, you know, fuel subsidy uh, being in the entire system, right? Deregulation and all of that has been actually encouraged. And so you also have the fact that uh, we're also asking, the government's also saying we're suspending the implementation, we're calling for the suspension of implementation of the PIA because it would also mean uh, we going against the law and the rule that we actually instituted. So, but it, it calls for the consent. Now, the argument for subsidy and its removal has, you know, been ongoing for a very long time. Some people say it's not the right time to remove subsidy. Some people say it's okay to remove the subsidy, but the big question lies with what are we supposed to do? Before you say you're taking out subsidy, 
Um, I'm sure that there are some things that should be in place before you are thinking of all of that. In the midst of all of the economic hardship, let's not forget the effect that COVID-19 had on the entire economy. And we have not recovered. I mean, the world has not recovered. Nigeria is still grappling. It's a good thing that we're hearing that, you know, we have uh, the oil prices increasing now, $90 uh, uh, dollar per barrel, barrel. Yeah. And yeah. which is a good one. Because remember the time where it dropped in 2014 that brought us to the recession that we're faced with. So. Um, there are too many questions, but at the end of the day, some people would say that a political will, when the government has a political will to do anything, they will get it done, and that's it. Mm. Well, that's so much that we can take at this point in time. Uh, unfortunately, we're unable to connect with our guest, Richard Inoyo. We're ho hoping that we have this conversation subsequently on The Breakfast. Uh, if you missed out on any part of it, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's at Plus TV Africa, and do subscribe to our YouTube channels at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko. Do have a fantastic day. And I'm Kofi Patel. So we return tomorrow. Good morning.